Hi everyone, welcome to our presentation. My name is Jovana Mitic and I'm going to talk about security analysis of Ripple Consensus Protocol. This is a joint work from researchers from Cryptology and Data Security Group from University of Bern. My co-authors on this paper are Ignacio Mores Cesar and Professor Christian Kasha. So let's start from giving a short introduction of Ripple. Ripple is a blockchain-based platform that enables secure and instant worldwide transactions at low cost and uh, it has a native cryptocurrency called XRP. Unlike Nakamoto's consensus protocol in Bitcoin or uh, in Ethereum, the Ripple consensus protocol does not rely on mining, but it uses a voting process relying on the identities of its validator nodes to reach consensus. This makes Ripple much more efficient than Bitcoin for processing transactions. So in Ripple, transaction, it, uh, Ripple can process up to 1,500 transactions per second and uh, it achieves very low transaction settlement times, which is between four and five seconds only, which um, we have to admit it's pretty fast compared to some other blockchain protocols. Ripple protocol is generally considered to be a Byzantine fault tolerant agreement protocol, which can reach consensus in the presence uh, of faulty or malicious nodes. In contrast to traditional Byzantine agreement protocols, there is no global knowledge of all participating nodes, but each node declares a unique node list, shortly called UNL, of other nodes that it trusts. The peer-to-peer -peer network consists of many independent Ripple servers that receive and process transactions. In this talk, I will always refer to the Ripple servers that take part in the consensus and these servers are called uh, validators. Now I would like you, uh, to show you an example of Ripple network and how UNLs are configured. In this example, there are six nodes. First four nodes uh, are in UNL 1, so black UNL, and last four nodes are in uh, UNL 2, colored in blue. Nodes 1, 2, and 3 trust to UNL 1, and nodes 4, 5, and 6 trust to UNL 2. This means for, that, for example, node 1 will listen only to the to messages coming from nodes 2, 3 and 4 and based on these messages this node will make its own decision. In order to reach a consensus among the all nodes there must be an overlap between each UNL. Here in this example we can see that overlap between two, UN, two UNLs is 50%. Most of previous work was trying to discover what is the minimum required overlap and what Ripple company guarantee is that protocol will work and be safe if your node has 100% overlap with the list of validators recommended by Ripple company. All configuration of file of one node is done in two files, um, ripple.config and uh, validators.txt. And now um, let's take a look how this, uh, these files look like. So here uh, we can see two files, uh, ripple.config and validators file. Um, they are from Ripple GitHub repository and uh, this is what is recommended uh, by uh, Ripple company. 
On the left side, uh, you can see Ripple configuration file, which uh, set up things like server addresses, uh, ports, database, etc. But for us, the most important part is highlighted in blue. Uh, here we can see that um, the specific file uh, that has the list of other nodes uh, that our node should trust, it's called validators.txt. Uh, which is presented on the right side of the slide. And as I said, both files are recommended configuration uh, from the Ripple. So validators file configures a, as a trusted uh, validate, validators all nodes that Ripple considers to be safe. This is a screenshot of the website where you can find all active validators in the Ripple network. Uh, and here we can see only one part of the validators that are recommended by Ripple, but the total number of them is 41 validator. A few years ago, most of the, validator, most of the validators were actually um, validating nodes of Ripple company, but now nowadays in the list of validators, uh, there are more and more nodes that are run by other institutions. So the number of Ripple com uh, of the nodes run by Ripple company uh, is dropping slowly. Anyways, in the recommended list, there are still five validators coming from Ripple company. So still, uh, we have this open question if Ripple is actually decentralized. Now we can move to the more technical and for all of us more interesting part of the Ripple. So let's take a look into consensus protocol that runs the Ripple network. Before we go further, I would like to mention that there is not so much done in the research regarding the security of Ripple consensus protocol. Um, there are only some papers which present how protocol works, but they are not very detailed and uh, pretty hard to understand. So the first contribution of our work is that we have an abstract description of the protocol which we derived from the source code of Ripple uh, 1.4 version. The current version in the moment of this uh, presentation is 1.6, but it does not have any significant changes regarding the consensus protocol compared to the version 1.4. Here on the picture, you can see one part of the pseudo code that we produced, and uh, you don't have to be able to understand uh, now what is written here, because um, I'm showing you this just to show how big and complex the protocol is. If you are interested in understanding the protocol, uh, I encourage you to take a look in this pseudo code, uh, which you can find in our paper. And now let's take a look in the most basic uh, element of Ripple uh, consensus protocol. Uh, that's a ledger, um, which roughly plays uh, the role of blocks in the blockchain protocols. Um, so a ledger is stored uh, persistently and it consists of a batch of transactions, a hash uh, of the logically preceding ledger, uh, sequence number and etc. Each node locally maintains three different ledgers. Uh, first one is a current ledger which is uh, in the process of building during a consensus round. Then the previous ledger, uh, which represents the most recently closed ledger. 
and the valid ledger, which is the last fully validated ledger in the network. The protocol uh, itself is highly synchronous. Um, there, there are some parts which are unsynchronous, but mostly this protocol is synchronous. Um, it relies on a common notion of time and it's structured into successive rounds of consensus. So the protocol rounds and their phases, there are three phases, I will talk about this later, uh, are implemented by a state machine, which is invoked every second when the global heartbeat timer ticks. As I said, there are three phases through which consensus goes on during one round. Uh, these phases are open, established and accepted. Usual phase transition goes from open to establish uh, and then to accept it and then uh, proceed to the next consensus round which starts again from open phase. It is also possible that phase changes from established to open phase if a node detects that it has been forked from the others to a wrong ledger. The timeout handler checks first if the local previous ledger is the same as the preferred ledger of a sufficient majority of the nodes in the network. If not, the node has been forked or lost synchronization with the rest of the network and must bring itself back to the state agreed by the network. In this case, it starts a new consensus round from scratch. Here is the general overview of how one consensus round looks like and now we will go uh, step by step through each phase. So let's start from the open phase. When the node enters a new round of consensus, it sets the phase to open, resets round specific data structures and waits for the buffer to fill up with submitted transactions. Once the node has been in the open phase for more than half of the duration of the previous consensus round, the node moves to the established phase. During the established phase, the nodes exchange their proposals for the transactions to decide in this consensus round using proposal messages, as you can see from the picture. These proposals may contain different transaction sets and all transactions on which the proposals from, the other, from other nodes differ become, become disputed. Every node keeps track of how many other nodes in its UNL have proposed a disputed transaction and represent this information as votes by the other nodes. The node may remove a disputed transaction from its own proposal or add one to its proposal and this decision is based on the votes coming from other nodes from UNL. What is interesting is that the node increases the necessary threshold of votes for changing its own vote on a disputed transaction depending on the duration of the established phase with respect to the time taken by the previous consensus round. So we can see from this graphic that the further we go in time, the higher is threshold. That means that the proposal needs higher support from other nodes in order to be included in the next ledger. The moment when the node moves to the accepted phase is when it has found that there is a consensus on its proposal, which means that 80% of nodes agreed on the same transaction set. So let's move to the accepted phase now. The node constructs the next ledger, called the last closed ledger, by applying the decided transactions. This ledger is signed and broadcast to the other nodes in, the, in a validation message. 
After that, Node immediately initialize a new consensus route. Concurrently, the node validates validation message from the nodes in its UNL. It verifies them and counts how many other nodes in its UNL have issued the same validation. When this number reaches 80% of the nodes in its UNL, the ledger becomes fully validated and the node executes the transaction contained in it. Our second contribution is that is the security analysis of the protocol where we found out two scenarios in which it's possible to violate safety and liveness of the Ripple consensus protocol. Now I will introduce the attack that leads to a violation of safety of the protocol. We study this attack in a setup of, uh, with a small number of, of honest nodes. In particular, we have seven nodes. One of them is a Byzantine. We divide them in two groups. Nodes one, two, and three, colored in black, have in UNL nodes from one to five. And blue nodes five, six, and seven have in UNL nodes from three to seven. Node four is a Byzantine. This node will behave as an honest node until the precise moment of the attack arrives. The moment is when black node proposes transaction TX at the same time when blue node proposes blue nodes propose the transaction TX prime. In this moment, we trigger the adversary and it will propose transaction TX to black nodes and TX prime to blue nodes. Now let's take a look a closer look into attack by focusing on local view of one node in each group because from the symmetry that we can see in this problem node 1 will follow the same steps as nodes 2 and 3 while node 5 will follow the same steps as nodes 6 and 7. So now we see that lo the local view of nodes 1 and 5. They will only listen to the messages coming from nodes in their UNL. Node 1 will get the message from, mm, messages from nodes 2, 3, 4 and 5. And this node, uh, these nodes will send the vote to node 1. And after collecting all votes, we can see that three votes are in favor uh, for transaction TX and one node for transaction TX prime. Don't forget that we have to consider our vote as well. It means that we have four votes out of five for transaction TX. This is exactly the 80% which is needed for including the transaction in a ledger. However, at the same time, from the point of view of node 5, the opposite happens. We have enough support for transaction TX prime, but not for transaction TX. The outcome of this situation is that these two nodes will create a different ledgers to be validated, so ledgers L and L prime, but these two are conflicting because they hold different transactions. Now we move to the second round where we try to validate these ledgers. Again, we take a closer look into nodes 1 and 5. From the point of view of node 1, it will get three votes for validating ledger L and one vote for validating ledger L prime. The opposite happens for node 5. As we recall from before, 80% of nodes has to agree on the same ledger. Because of that, two honest nodes will validate two different ledgers, leading to a break of safety. In other words, we have serious problems in Ripple protocol. 
In the ripple, we can also attack liveness. As we saw before, the optimal case for safety is having the huge overlap between UNLs. However, if we consider a scenario with two and honest nodes and one Byzantine node, and they all share one same UNL, we can break liveness. To do this, we just have to wait until the half of the node nodes propose a transaction Tx, while the other half propose a different transaction Tx prime. This is the moment when we start the attack. The malicious node will behave as proposing the transaction Tx to the nodes that are proposing transaction Tx and will behave as proposing transaction Tx prime to the nodes proposing transaction Tx prime. With this attack, we managed to break the liveness of the protocol because from the point of view of any of the nodes, we see that what we propose strictly has more than 50% of the support in our UNL, which are all nodes, so we don't change our mind. We keep proposing transactions and we do not accept the other one because it has less than 50% support. So we will do over and over again, breaking the liveness. And now we are getting closer to the end of this presentation. So let's quickly sum up what we have done in our paper. Previous work regarding the Ripple consensus protocol has already brought up some concerns about its liveness and safety. In order to better analyze the protocol, this work has presented an, an independent abstract description of Ripple's consensus protocol derived directly from the implementation. Furthermore, this work has identified rel relatively simple cases in which the protocol may violate safety and liveness and which have devastating effects on the health of the network. Our analysis illustrates the need for very close synchronization and tight interconnection between the participating validators in the Ripple network. That would be all. Thank you for your attention. And if you want to know more details of our security analysis, you can scan this QR code or find our paper in Archive repository. Thank you one more time.